Spring break is over, and so is March Madness as far as we're concerned. Welcome to The Prowl. The Pride. The passion, the purple. This is the Prowl. Hello and welcome to the Prowl. I'm Nathan Grieve. And I'm Sean Dangler. The UNI men's rugby team spring season is already underway and off to a fantastic start. Riley Cosgrove caught up with this close knit team. Spring is here and the UNI men's rugby team is ready for their spring season. I got the chance to talk to the president and some of the players of this very close-knit team. My name is Chris Guerrero. I'm the UNI men's rugby president. I've been on the rugby team since I was a freshman. This is my fourth year. Um, there's two seasons, so we play in the fall and the spring. And then we even have the option to uh, get in some tournaments in the summer if we have enough players around to uh, participate. So this is my second year being president. Um, I was actually lucky the c previous president to myself, Kurt Flood, he uh, you know he had a lot more responsibilities. We didn't, we didn't have a coach for a couple years and uh, he would have to plan all the practices and um, it's, very, it's a big responsibility, a lot of stuff to take care of on and off the field. And um, I'm really lucky to have a coach, um, Ryan Gray. He uh, is a teacher in Waterloo, and he uh, definitely helped out by coming to practice and having stuff to, for the team to do and you know drills to make us better and always developing our skills. I'm an accounting major here. I'm also a treasurer for the UNI team, men's rugby team. And I think it's a really good idea to play because you get to get out of the, build, uh, like the class buildings and get out and just hit people and make a lot of friendships. And I mean, you could be anything. You could be an accounting nerd and still come out and hit people, and it's a lot of fun. So There's a lot of other guys in leadership positions that definitely step up and help out the team a lot uh, as far as our vice president, treasurer. Um, we have social chair. There's a lot of positions that... Um, require commitment to the team and it's not just myself but off the field there's definitely a lot to take care of. I joined playing rugby spring of 2013 and it was right when I transferred here and I absolutely love playing rugby because you can absolutely you can beat up the other team on the field and then you can just hang out with them ever afterwards it's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of respect for people who play rugby between each team and no matter what happens on the field, it's not taken personally and it's, there's no issues caused and everyone usually can get along afterwards no matter which team you play for, no matter what the outcome of the game is. My name is Ryan Brown. I'm a psychology major here at UNI. I'm a junior. This is my second year playing rugby with the men's rugby team. I didn't play freshman year. Didn't even know what rugby was until Dave Lyon from the team introduced me to the sport. Uh, they introduced it my senior year of high school. I didn't really know what it was. Uh, came out, checked it out really thought it was cool and you know there's no tryouts you just you know come out and do your best and you work your way up to the top and play with the team so I have a great time. Um, the difference between freshman year and senior year is with a coach and with a lot more structure we became a lot more competitive with rugby um, we've always been really good um, competed in the Northern Lights Conference which is mostly Minnesota schools uh, North Dakota some South Dakota teams, but you know the games we we would be winning by 60, 70, 80 points, and the only team we lost to last year was the uh, defending national champions in D2 rugby. So it's just it wasn't as competitive, and we were pretty much a social club. But the way we're going now is more competitive. You and I men's rugby is always welcoming new players, and you don't have to be a star athlete to join. Playing rugby in high school is definitely will definitely benefit coming here and joining the team. But we have a lot of guys that have no rugby experience at all that have you know just started hearing about the sport that are interested in playing. Just some come for the social aspect, you know, the brotherhood, the bonding, the friendship, and uh, some come for you know they want to stay competitive. They are athletes in high school and they want to stay in shape and continue, you know, developing their skills and their body because rugby is definitely a, a tough sport and you have to be conditioned. So there's a lot of benefits to playing rugby with the men's team. Uh, first off, you just 
create a whole bunch of friendships, you know. If you uh, come to UNI and you just, you know, just do your studies, it might not be enough. You don't have the social network. You come out on the rugby team, you got a ton of guys, just a whole bunch of friendships you create. And uh, another great reason is you just stay in great shape. We're uh, hosting a tournament here in Cedar Falls on the 18th of April. It's called the Collegiate Cup, and we invite teams from all over Iowa and the Midwest to come play. Uh, we'll probably even have men's teams to compete in that. And uh, you and I for kids will be there. Um, they'll be running the concession stand fundraising for their organization. On assignment for the Prowl, this is Riley Cosgrove reporting for you and I TV. Thank you, Riley. Next, is darts truly a gentleman's game? We sent our field reporter Andy McConnell out to learn a little bit more. Darts. Dart, darts. Yep, you guessed it. Today I'm on assignment as we dive in to learn more about the wonderful game of darts. As I said, I mean, it's just something easy. Most people can do. Good thing to do, socializing, stuff like that. Because uh, it's a good pastime, really sociable game. Uh, that's, yeah. While dart seems like a relaxing game, it does get pretty competitive, which does bring out a different side of people. Well, my favorite part's winning, I don't like losing. I don't know, yeah, it gets frustrating. I get too competitive sometimes, I guess. Pretty competitive, but at the same time, I think darts is kind of tough to get super competitive about. It's a pretty laid back, sociable game. The good thing about darts is that there are many different games you can play. Um, the only three I've ever played would be 501, which is probably my favorite, and then uh, cricket and baseball. Uh, you got cricket, 501, 301, baseball, if you have a baseball dartboard. The only bad thing about darts is that... Uh, nah, not really. No. Nope. Darts is literally for anyone, ranging from your typical average Joe to the more skilled everyday player. Can I just throw, aim... Nothing too special. Uh, if you can repeat your motion over and over, it probably helps. Uh, otherwise, it helps if you can see straight. Okay. Otherwise, I don't, don't think it really takes a lot of special talent. Okay. Whether it's at the local bar or in a dorm room against three of your best friends, darts is truly a game for everyone. It's fun, can, fun activity you can do with other people, I guess. I would recommend darts to everybody except two kinds of people. Uh, people who don't want to have fun, and people who are way too competitive because unless you practice all the time, you're just going to get upset and really frustrated. Uh, just the socialization with friends, to be honest. I mean, you can be a little competitive, but it's, it's a pretty easy game. So, If you haven't played darts, give it a try once. You might like it. For you and ITV Soprow, I'm Andy McConnell. Thank Thank you, Andy. We just might have, uh, we might have to give darts a try. Do you love the cold? Do you love falling down? Do you want a potential injury? Then Anton Ryder has the perfect sport for you. A little known group here at the University of Northern Iowa is Club SOL, which stands for Student Outdoor Leadership Education. It's a club that anyone can join and they meet Mondays at 3.15 in the WRC. The group offers tons of awesome activities for its members to do. Over the winter months, the group offered the game of broomball. Broomball is a game much like hockey. It is played on the ice either at indoor rinks or outdoors. Six players on each team line up for some balling and brawling. Five players plus a goalie are on each team. The game uses brooms instead of a stick, which is a specially designed tool for the game of broom ball. The game also uses small balls instead of a puck. Other than that, the rules are basically the same. The group, however, does not follow all the rules that official broom ball leagues are supposed to follow. The group's main goal is to have a good time and show a little bit about a little known sport. One thing that is bound to happen when playing on the ice is falling, and boy was there a lot of it.
While the group doesn't act or play the most professionally, they far make up for it in the amount of fun they have. Go check them out next Monday at 3.15 in the WRC. For you and ITV's The Prowl, I'm Anton Ryder. Well, it's a little bit too warm to be playing that outside now. Anyway, thanks, Anton. The annual Rock Revolution Climbing Competition took place last week. Here's a look at the setup of the event. Ready, set, climb. The 16th annual Rock Revolution Rock Climbing Competition took place March 7th at the UNI Wellness and Recreation Center. The event brought climbers from all over the area to test their luck at the many routes and ledges offered by the UNI Outdoors organization. The Prowl was there to capture the calm before the storm as the climbing crew rigorously prepared for the event. Basically, we're just getting ready for our annual competition, Rock Revolution. We do it every year, beginning of March, so it's super fun and a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. Right now, we have about 55 to 60 people signed up. That's not including people who come day of and sign up, so we're probably looking right around 60. We have some people from the various universities within you know, Iowa, like Iowa, Iowa State, you and I, um, and then just from the general public too. We have some other schools from like Nebraska and like Minnesota, and basically just whoever. Like climbing community is kind of pretty tight knit, even between schools. So you kind of know people from other schools, and you get some people coming in. You go to their comps, they come to yours, and it's just really fun kind of community but environment. The climbing crew put much time and effort into setting up the rock wall to give competitors the ultimate experience. As far as like setting routes, it's kind of an uh, interesting process. You need to make sure you have different difficulties on each rope, so I mean there's something for everyone to try. Um, we have people behind the scenes getting sponsorships ready. We've been doing that since the end of last semester. Um, we, I mean, it's, it's definitely a team effort. We have like, I think about 30 people in total helping out and the man hours is I can't. I couldn't even tell you. It's 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 crazy the amount of uh, work that goes into getting this thing going. Hosting the indoor competition also gives climbers a chance to do what they love, regardless of the weather. Yeah, especially in the winter, we get really, really antsy for climbing outside. So that's a perfect time for this competition. And most schools have their competitions in the fall and winter. So it's just a really great chance to just get together with other climbers and just kind of share what you love. And there are many competitions in the future, and even if you have never climbed before, there are ways to get involved with the sport. We have a bunch of posters down here for um, competitions in the future at like, you know, Minnesota and other surrounding schools, so. We're totally open to new climbers. Like, climbing is a great sport because you don't get judged if you suck at right away. Like, everyone's been there. No one was great when they first started, so that's kind of what we try to tell everybody is that like, you know, no one's awesome the first time they touch rock. Like, and that's what a lot of, especially experienced climbers, like, understand is that like, it's a process. It takes time. Like, it's not necessarily who's the strongest person. It's who has the best technique. It's, and a lot of that just comes with time with climbing, like knowing how your body moves. And For you and ITV's The Prowl, I'm Mike Lieb. I'll just say it. Thank you, Mike. That story rocked. The UNI Taekwondo Club is the oldest collegiate martial arts club in the U.S. with the first non-Asian junior master instructor in Taekwondo. Tyler Morford reports on this legendary club. Most people don't understand the nature of martial arts. Our philosophy is actually to eliminate violence. So Taekwondo's philosophy is for the individual to train and become a better person. Not so you can go out and dominate others, but so that others will not oppress you. I am Junior Grandmaster Joseph Phillip. Jumpy! The United Taekwondo Club was started in 1969. A young high school senior came to the United States from Korea. His name is General Che. He attended West High School in Waterloo, and then he enrolled here at the University of Northern Iowa. He was already a fourth degree black belt at the time, and he taught beginning students basic Taekwondo technique in the West Gym, it was actually called the Men's Gym at the time, and that was the start of the UNI Taekwondo Club. And 45 years later, uh, we are UNI's oldest sport club. We're the oldest collegiate Taekwondo program in America, and we have proudly produced 748 distinguished black belts. 
There are 130 recognized martial arts styles, including five different and distinct Taekwondo styles. Taekwondo originated in Korea. Uh, it was actually started by Buddhist monks who would travel the countryside spreading religion, teaching religion, and the bad guys would rob them of their possessions. All they had was food and, you know, they had menial possessions. So these Buddhist monks, these holy men, these priests developed an exercise of self-defense and that is the origin of Taekwondo, which is 2,500 years old. Uh, mentally, I'd say I've gained a lot more confidence since I've come into this club. My favorite part, I would have to say, is we're a big family. We're there for each other no matter what. My favorite parts are um, I get to work with some really fabulous students, but it's helped me develop as a person. A big thing for me is learning, and my daughter was doing it, and I looked at that, and I thought, yeah, maybe I could do that, and so I joined. If you are at all interested in checking out the club, you don't have to have any prior experience. You don't need to be worried about it. It's a very open environment. We take people of all um, you know, physical capabilities, and you're going to get the, the best Taekwondo training really in the entire United States, and I can say that confidently. Believe it, it's um, good for your body and soul. <laughs> I am a grandmaster, but I'm called junior grandmaster, which means I am still learning as well. Yeah, everybody I've heard talking about breaking boards, that's, that's a kick. <laughs> that's something that I never thought I would do. Once you break the board, you're like, I can do this. We do have a website. It's UNITKD.com. We ask all students interested just to visit our website and come by and watch class. Quanto Noon is an, an inspiration. I can't imagine the dedication that he's had um, studying Taekwondo for 46 years, practicing daily. So it's just amazing uh, to, to learn from him. So he's, he's all of our inspiration. Thanks, Tyler, for that hard-hitting journalism. The UNI Taekwondo Club meets Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. in the WRC. Next, as the NCAA tournament continues on, we're going to take a look back at some of the Panthers' greatest moments this year. Riley Cosgrove. And I'm Margot Sturgis. And I'm Austin Hansen. I can start. My my original bracket is a little busted. But um, so this week, um, this next weekend, we'll have the Sweet 16 matchups. But as far as the final four goes, I have Kentucky and Wisconsin, which I've always had. But then I have Duke and I have Louisville going to the final four, which I don't think Louisville was in my original one, but I still have Wisconsin winning overall. 
So half of my bracket is different, half of my bracket is the same. So cool. Let's uh, let's take this game by game. Uh, the first one you have Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I also have Kentucky. Do you have Kentucky? I think we all have Kentucky. I, I, th I think you'd be stupid not to pick Kentucky at this point. They've just been hot. They've been hot all season. Haven't lost yet, and uh, I, don't, I don't see them losing anytime soon. Yeah, I had Kentucky and Wisconsin for the Final Four matchup, and I. If you could see my paper, I have it scribbled out like Wisconsin, Kentucky, Wisconsin. Like it was hard to pick, but I'm, a putting, I'm putting my faith in the Wisconsin and the Big Ten, so they are not disappoint me. What do you guys think of the uh, Wichita State Notre Dame game? I think I mean we've played Wichita State, so it'd be nice to see them. You know, we battled it out with them and see them go farther. But I do think Notre Dame will. Win the game. I think Notre Dame's going to win. I actually have Wichita State winning that game, but I think it's going to be a real toss up. I think it's going to be really close. Wichita looked really good against Kansas this week. Uh, uh, a little disappointed that they're the only Missouri Valley team left, but it, it, that'll be a good one. That's one I'm looking forward to. I have, like, on my paper again, I have um, for Wichita State and Notre Dame, I have it, like, crossed out. Like, I was going to have Wichita State, and then I thought about the game that um, Notre Dame played against Butler, and I was like, oh, I don't know, they're pretty good. So I crossed Wichita State out and put Notre Dame again. I just don't, at this point in the tournament, I just don't know. I mean. With the amount of upsets that have been going on, mm -hmm. who knows what's going to happen? This has been crazy. Right, the East region, um, in which Syracuse. Which was our region. Which was our region. I, hope, I wanted to put Northern Iowa here. Just I know, even when I was filling this out and I had to like cross it, you know, I was like, <sighs> like it was, just, <laughs> it was just really hard. Uh, do you think Louisville can win that game, though? against NC State. NC State played super tough against Villanova. Uh, everybody saw the viral picture go around of the sad Piccolo player, but uh, I think I think if Louisville plays the same game they played against mm -hmm. Northern Iowa, I think they'll win that game. Uh, NC State had a good game, but I don't I don't see it last very long. Yeah, um, if Louisville plays like they did against you and I, I have them going to the Final Four and um, it was widely reported or opinion on a lot of people that that was Louisville's best game they played was against you and I. So if they do that, then the sky's the limit. I mean. And I have NC State over um, Louisville because I think that when they got their win against Villanova that they just are gonna keep going. And Louisville was like, you don't know, you know, like either, it could've went either way as much as we wanted you and I to win. They were closer seeds and with NC State beating Villanova and it being such a big game, they're gonna keep going. Um, we got UCLA. Yeah, UCLA I haven't been super impressed with lately. Uh, they've been having a decent tournament, um, but that whole region got screwed up with that Iowa State loss, so. But UCLA is one of those teams, because yeah. they're, I mean, they were only 11th seat in the tournament and UCLA, shout out, they're really helping my bracket because for some reason when I was doing my original bracket, I picked them to win and then go on again. So my bracket, like, that's, UCLA is my saving grace. So, I mean. It's a lot of faith say, in UCLA. For, yeah. <laughs> for a 20 and 13 team to make it to the Sweet 16, that's pretty impressive. That's a good point. And that's then I got, point. this is my one with my great story behind it of my picking. Um, I'm picking Gonzaga to win because when I was younger, I wrote to them in elementary for a writing class. So <laughs> that is my reasoning behind my Gonzaga pick. Well, that's, sometimes that's all it takes. You yeah. just need a little extra encouragement from I mean, some, you never know. It's a flip Iowa. a coin kind of thing sometimes. It really is. All right, real quick, guys. Go through your final four and who's winning it all. I, I have Kentucky, Wisconsin, Louisville versus Duke, and I have Duke taking it, Duke and Wisconsin going, and I have Wisconsin winning, so we'll see. I would love to see that, but I chose differently. I have Kentucky, Wisconsin, NC State, and Duke in the final four, Kentucky and Duke making it to the final two, and Kentucky taking it all. All right. I've got Kentucky, Oklahoma, Gonzaga, Wisconsin. I have Wisconsin beating Gonzaga in the national championship, low scoring, 58 to 56. We'll see. I don't think any of our brackets are going to be right, to be honest. It's a tournament to believe like it's going to be, but yeah. Sounds good. All right, well. Tucked away on Thursday afternoons in the Rod Library is a club which needs more recognition. To wrap things up today, we go to the season reporter, Sean Dangler, who has the story. The rookie's here, right? The rook was here. Yeah. Oh, he was there? I yeah. thought he was here. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Too much pride. Chess originated over 1,700 years ago, and on the campus of the University of Northern Iowa, students are playing this historic game as a club. 
While select people associate chess with being unsocial, this club paints a different picture. It's pretty fun. It's, uh, uh, it's a lot more social than you might think. Chess, at least most of the people in this chess club um, aren't like your, what you, I don't know, like your stereotypical chess player, which would be like, you know, somebody who's quiet, kind of a little, I don't know, quirky and doesn't like to talk a lot, socially awkward. It's kind of like the opposite of that for this chess club. I mean, what keeps, keeps me coming back to the club is just the people. I mean, everyone's having a good time and we're, we're chatting. We're not like a serious chess club where everybody's silent and focused. You know, we're just laughing, having a good time. So it's a lot of fun. This fun is an important reason for the club's atmosphere. Even if no one is a chess grandmaster, the members of this club enjoy the challenge of chess. It's something really difficult to think about. It's something you can improve upon, and it's competitive. So it's sort of a competitive outlet for me because I don't really have any other place I compete. So that's one of the ways that I sort of can you know, play against people, I guess. I like chess because it's really challenging. There's a lot of different strategies and no two games are the same, and so that's really fun. The different strategies of chess are a few of the many reasons why this club would like to share this game with other students and high school chess clubs around the area. We're trying to make the club more known, and we're trying to get more, get more of the student body involved, so that's why we're trying to hold more tournaments and invite you know, anybody and everybody to come. And uh, we're going to try to start reaching out to some local high schools as well and maybe visit a couple of the high school clubs and, uh, you know, just try to make our presence more known. This presence is important to the chess club. Chess can be perceived as not as exciting and competitive as sports like football, rock climbing, and snowboarding. But this is untrue. This game can be equally as exciting and competitive. Like, I guess if you can, like, I don't know, see a pretty sweet move, I guess, or something that your opponent didn't see a couple moves down the line or something, then yeah, that's a pretty good thrill, I suppose. But just winning is, like, number one. There's certain moves that you make that are kind of sneaky, and your opponent just doesn't see it coming. And when you make that move and you see it on their face, and they're like, oh, my world is ruined. And you're just like, yes. You know, it just feels great. So I guess to be able to surprise your opponent is always a lot of fun. And I, I look for opportunities to do that in my game. The opportunities of beating opponents can happen if you are interested in joining the chess club. They have advice for anyone who is interested. Just show up like any day you want, any Thursday from 47 and you're in the chess club. You're in the Rod Library in the back by Book Bistro. For The Prowl, I'm John Dangler. Chess sure does look like a beautiful game until you get checkmated. Right, Sean? Yep. Well, we've got a couple notes before we take off. First and foremost, all of us here at the Prowl would like to extend our best wishes and just all around good cheer. Our professor, Eric Braley, recently had his first child named Elijah, we're told. So fantastic job, Eric. Congratulations to you. Well, for Sean Dangler, I'm Nathan Grieve. Thank you all for watching the Prowl. We'll see you next time.